how this video is getting progressively more difficult to make. Do I write my script as I go along, or do I hop in voice chat and just play Stories 2 as I talk to my friends and record at the same time? I could always remove the audio coming from my friends and make it purely a scripted video. It's fine since this is my first playthrough, right? Right? <laughs> eh, no. Writing a whole script after playing the entire game is too tedious, so I'll just try to make this short and easy to digest. Yeah, that'll be better. Today, I'll be showing you my entire journey through Monster Hunter Stories 2, where I'll only be using the new monsters and equipment that weren't in the first game. Now, because this is my first playthrough of the game, I am allowing myself to use Razewing Ratha, but I'm also using other monsters that aren't new for the right of channeling. I can also use older monsters for getting past certain obstacles, kinda like HM Mules. This is my whole playthrough that I did over the last week, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. But because I decided to record the journey while being in voice chat with my members talking, I can't exactly show my reactions for any parts of the game. The reason is because while you react to something while someone else is talking, the reaction dies off. So I'll just explain the whole experience in a nutshell. By the way, this video is going to contain heavy spoilers for the story, so click off the video if you still by some chance haven't played through it yet. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. After escaping the flooded forest and crash landing in a Hakalo Island, the Valstrax I was riding disappeared and I was soon introduced to Kena. She then showed me a ceremony which was then followed by a lot of Rathalos leaving the island due to a strange light appearing. I was then forced to use a Velocidrome named Ranmar and proceeded to learn how to do combat alongside my Monsty. I then retrieved my first egg from a monster den after encountering a strange feline and I hatched it. It's a Kulu Yaku, our first real starter monster. After naming him Beaky, I obtained another Velocidrome for some reason and was told to find a creature using scout flies. I picked up some broken materials to then find a Yonkaku afterwards. We beat it and hunt a Bulldrome in what's called an Everden, only to come across an unusually enraged Anjanath mid-battle. We escaped and returned to the village only to find some people asking us to hunt a poison-spitting monster. We go hunt it and it was a Puke Puke. After beating it, we get an egg. We hatch it and it's a Puke Puke that I called Puncake for some strange reason. After doing a bunch of subquests, we went to Guardian Wrath and Woods. After reaching the ends of the woods, a woman approaches me and mistakes me for someone else who I find out is my grandfather. Suddenly, the Anjanath appeared again and we engage it in combat. This fight was taking a while because my armor was weak to fire, and my monsters were only tech since I could only use Puke and Kulu. But after a while, the Anjanath went down and the Wyvarian girl introduces herself. Her name is Enna, and she entrusted me with a Rathalos egg. I then went off with her by boats to the next village, although I can't help but feel we're being watched. Once we arrived at Alcala, Enna got snatched by a rider with a Legiana and we went after it. Turns out it was a Wyvarian who is Enna's friend and who is also a rider. His name is Alwyn. Once we reached Enna's hometown, Ruto Village, we meet an elder who is accompanied by a tall Wyvarian. The elder told us that we were inexperienced and need more training. We do what he said and hunted a Palumu as training, and in the process, received a Palumu of our own and named it Poodle. After that, we are then told to find a rock beast. Turns out, it was a Basarios. Totally didn't see that coming. Anyway, we engaged the thing in combat and it ran away multiple times before we were able to finish it off. We then hunt a Yangaruga next due to a guy who was afraid of his daughter. Man, parenting these days. We meet a strange feline in the cave and then fight the Garuga. We beat it and returns to the village. We were then tasked to find some lost children and did battle with the Duramburus. I was excited, but then I studied it and found out that it as well as Tetsukabra cannot be tamed for some reason. After being disappointed by that, I learned about the rite of channeling. This will be useful later on. We then went to where Anna told me more about my grandfather, Red. After a flashback, Rathian appears. It's what everyone calls a Rage Raid monster due to being affected by the light that comes from the large pits in the ground. I must say that I struggled in this battle. I still only had a team of tech-based monsties, and it didn't help that this Rathian was enraged. But I did pull through with the help of Alwyn. The Rathalos egg was ready to hatch and we went back to the village. As the egg hatched, I noticed a dark aura emanating off of it. It hatched and we all noticed the wings being so small. We are then brought to a mural that speaks of a Rathalos that was born without the ability to fly. After learning this, we set out to seek the truth behind the wings of Ruin. On our way to a place called Kuan Village, we get interrupted by a Rage Raid Zamtrios. Midway through the battle, another rider appears with her Berioth. After she helps us beat the Blubber Shark, I touch this girl's face as a way of saying hello. Not sure what I was thinking when I did that, but anyway, her name is Avinia. We head to Kuan Village and help the chief out with some errands to build some windmills. These errands consisted of hunting a Nursilla, a Baroth in an icy cape for some reason, a Tobikadachi, and a Kezu that was blocking the way for merchants to deliver supplies. 
After doing all that, I scared away Kadachi into its den and retrieved its egg. I hatched it and named it Shockzerd. I forgot to mention that I got an Anjaneth along the way. After helping the chief, he asks us to go investigate the pit up in the mountain. Once we get there, we engage battle with a Celtus Queen. This was a tough battle as her peasant Celtus would constantly get in the way. They are very dangerous together, but after taking them down, we go find old Dede, who was apparently someone who can awaken and seal a monster's powers. After reaching the hot spring where he was supposed to be, we dispatch a Lagambi before we could finally meet this channeler. He then leaves me to find the answer for myself. I figured this would happen. After speaking with him, we find another pit and fight a Legiana. It becomes Rage Raid and Ratha starts losing control of himself. He started to show this dark energy that causes him to fly after Legiana. They were headed to the village which was in danger. Ratha then destroyed the windmills that we helped Avinia with. I was in deep sorrow when this happened. I was responsible for the damage he caused. My bond with Ratha just wasn't strong enough. But I did have the answer and it only took me this long to figure it out. If I had found the answer sooner, we wouldn't be in this mess. You know, I often wonder why it takes me so long to find the answers for such things. But after searching for the answer, I went back to old Dede and tell him the answer which I thought I knew from the start. Kinship. And afterwards, he reawakens Ratha's powers. Later on, we ran into a hunter and his palico, who I had a feeling was spying on us the whole time. The hunters that were with him proceed to restrain Ratha and take him away as well as us. There was a whole discussion about Ratha's wings when this guy named Roberto came along with us to complete some errands to prove our worth as riders. Roberto has an interesting, albeit an odd way of tracking down monsters, and as a result, we did find a Plesioth and dispatched it, as well as lay waste to a Cephatrom that somehow drove out the Plesioth. Okay then. It was at this point where I obtained a Legiana and named it Sana. I was planning on changing its typing later. We went back to the Scrivener's Lodge and are told that Ratha was in a lab of sorts and went to investigate. We then come across a band of mysterious riders who were dead set on not letting us interfere with their plans. We beat them and they made a hasty retreat. We then got to the lab and saw that hunters and riders were taking Ratha somewhere. What were they planning? After taking down a Rage Raid Diablos, we find that the goons left behind skid marks in the sand, letting us follow where the ship went, following them to a place called Lamore Tower. We see what they're up to and find that this operation was being led by a rider in what appears to be Nergigante armor. We then saw the young hunter get double-crossed by the hunters that were with him, and then we did battle with a rider that had a Ruby Basarios. After dispatching him, we climbed the tower, fought a Monoblos followed by a Black Diablos, and reached the highest room in the tallest tower. The flying ship started to get away, but Naviru went Super Saiyan and gave me a boost. I barely grabbed onto the bar and climbed onto the ship. I noticed Ratha starting to go insane again as he bashed his wings to blow everyone back. I tried to calm him down, but a goon tried to fire a bullet at him, but it ended up hitting me and knocking me off the ship. This totally doesn't seem familiar to me. After seeing me fall, Ratha grew his wings instantly and flew to get me as well as rescue Enna. We then flew to reach the Pit of Remembrance. Enna told me what happened to my grandfather. Supposedly, he was battling a Nergigante, fell in a pit, and died. It was probably the saddest moment for Enna. She told me that Red never found out the truth behind the pits and that she was going to need my help. So we continued on and found a village that was destroyed by a nearby pit. After seeing a fat feline challenge a Crimson Kuropeko, we fought it and had a little bit of trouble. This partly had to do with the fact that Ratha was weak to thunder. It also didn't help that Plume Hermitar came into the fray. After beating them both, we headed to a feline hideout where we're told to investigate what's going on in Primor Garden. After beating down a Ligaikris, we go deeper into the woods to find another pit. There we faced the same Mizutsune, only this time it was Rage Raid. We actually lost this battle primarily due to the fact that my only answer against this thing was weak to water. That and we were underleveled. So it was at this point where I needed to train my team. There wasn't a lot of new monsters that I came across, so there was only one option at this point. Gamut. I figured that if I made it use thunder moves, I can beat Mizutsune and continue on. But I had to obtain the Gamut first. I spent a lot of attempts trying to beat the royal Gameth that was sleeping in the woodlands. The Gameth was so strong, but after several attempts, I was able to make it retreat to its den and retrieve the first egg because I didn't want to wake up the sleeping Gameth again. It was at this point where I did a lot of progress recording and completely forgot to remux the footage and deleted all the unremuxed MKV files to save space and thought I remuxed everything, but I didn't. I lost so much recorded progress from this that I was demotivated to even make this video. I'm breaking the fourth wall here, but it was so aggravating. So to get you guys up to speed, here's my team and I'm at the point where we're at Nuate Village and are searching for Nergigante. It was such a shame that all that footage was gone because I would have loved to show you guys the reaction I had when I obtained the Astalos for the first time. But to make up for that, here's a screenshot of the first ever Astalos that I ever hatched. 
So with that out of the way, let's continue the video. So at this point, I was trying to change Sana's typing to water, and it didn't work, and later I found out that the system doesn't work like it did in Stories 1, because yes, I broke the fourth wall again, and this was very upsetting. I spent so many hours trying to make my Legiana a full-on water type, only for the mechanic to not even work. After finding out the unfortunate news, I continued on and had Sana use water moves anyway. Might need them later. After adding some genes to my newly obtained Astalos, I tested him out in battle and it was so satisfying to use him. Giving him that high voltage gene was so nice because he looked so cool powered up. We were in battle with a green Plesioth and I noticed his giant hip check hits all targets. Lovely. But after seeing one of the coolest kinship attacks, we move on to find Nergigante only to find a Brachidios in the process. For this fight, I used Sana since he can do water attacks, despite not having the water typing. Bracky was hitting pretty hard, but I did manage to beat it thanks to the water attacks from Sana. Back at Nuate, our friend Shevel tells us that he used to hate monsters and only wanted revenge. But it was thanks to a real writer that taught him what real kinship was. After that little story, we head to the next location where Nergi was last spotted. The Crystal Depths. After traveling a good distance in this cave, we find Nergigante and do battle. This fight would have been harder if it weren't for my Astalos named Volt Strike, as well as my Thunder Weapons. Nergigante is really hard if underprepared. After dispatching it, something happened. A Rage Ray appears from the ground, and Ratha went crazy again. Nergigante was also somehow alive, and both of them started going towards it. Out came the large creature again, and Nergi tried to take it on, but failed. The creature caused fissures in the ground, and I almost died the same way Red did. But Enna was determined to not let me go. Shevel also came to help. We returned to Nuate Village and discovered that the monster in the pits had a name, Altura. We went to find the mural that looked just like the one back in Roto Village, but this time it was different. There was a large creature at the bottom of the mural. It's Altura. I was told by Yumlana that Ratha's power was too much for him to bear alone. I must bear it with him if we are to defeat Altura. But before we do anything else, I go out egg hunting and find a rare egg. It looks to be Elder Dragon. I hatch it, and it's... A Nergigante. I name it after our fallen friend Mike Voltaine. Seeing that Nergigante is added to Stories 2 as a monster was something he was hoping for before he passed away. I named the Nergi Mike in honor of my subscriber, channel member, and friend. After giving Mike the necessary genes, we go to investigate three different pits that appeared and were supposedly changing color. The first one was in Alcala. We find the pit, did battle with a Glavinus, and dispatched it with Mike as well as Sana. Next was Glacial Ignactor at the pit in Liloska. This one was difficult, but I was able to lay waste to it pretty easily with my Anjanath named Wannabe and Mike the Nergigante. The last pit to investigate was in Jalma Highlands, aka the Desert. We find that the pit is purplish blue and there was a Gendrum of all things. The battle with Gendrum was very easy until we were ambushed by a Basil Goose. We do battle and the fight was pretty easy and satisfying thanks to my Thunder Weapons as well as Volt Strike the Astalos. We went back to Nuate Village when we came across those mysterious riders again. The mastermind revealed himself. It was Zellard all along. I had a feeling about the guy back in Ruto. He speaks of the Exalted One, aka Altura, that will destroy the world and make it new or something like that. After an argument about Altura, he orders his men to apprehend us but we won't go down without a fight. Our opponents were fierce and difficult considering our circumstances, but they went down one after another. Then Zellard's wingmen tried to deal with us. The Brute's Tigrex on their side was a big threat because it can deal massive damage to us. I then switched to Volt Strike to deal with the Stygians and Ogre. They hit us pretty hard, but in the end, we came out on top. Once we beat them, they tried to escape, but Lilia showed up and her band of Scriveners arrested the goons. She had told us that Otura's lair was on Hakalo Island, which is where I first crash landed. I was startled to hear this as my people could be in danger. Once we arrived, we noticed the Rathalos being attracted to the light turning blue. We had to hurry. Once we reached Guardian Ratha Woods, we found Guardian Ratha himself. He started to become Rage Raid, but I used my Kinship Stone to calm him down. But once I did, I turned around and noticed Ratha being restrained. Zellard had him hostage. After a little argument, he turned Ratha to the dark side and flew away. We asked Guardian Ratha to help us fly where Zellard was going. He helps us, but gets hurt in the process. We arrived to face Zellard. I was there to rescue Ratha, here to show him the power of kinship. I lead off with Volt Strike because I knew Ratha was weak to Thunder. This battle was hard mostly because Zellard kept spamming moves three times per turn, but he couldn't handle the Thunder attacks I inflicted. We beat him, but he insisted on sacrificing Ratha as well as himself to this abomination. This man is crazy. He flew away with Ratha, but then I tailed him with Guardian Ratha. Zellard tries to get himself and Ratha eaten, but then we push them out of the way. 
I tried to avoid the monster as best I could with Guardian Ratha, but the creature was too fast and eventually caught up to us. But then Red Spirit appeared, putting his hand on my kinship stone as if telling me to let go. I let go of Guardian Ratha and sadly, he dies to Altura, sacrificing himself to save Ratha and me. Out comes Ultura's true form, which I honestly wasn't expecting. Zellard was still crazy and tries to fall in the pit, but Anna didn't let him. She gave him the talk and he now realized that it wasn't Ultura that wanted a new world, it was him. Anyways, we go find Ultura at the top of the Forbidden Grounds. We face off and do battle. I kept Ratha in at first and even got a double kinship attack in, but not before taking a huge blast that nearly wiped us out after Ultura grew a second pair of wings. I switched in the Volt Strike and used Burst Fire from my Gun Lance to get big damage in. Though the Tempest attacks did a lot of damage to us, we had to go for the wings whenever we could. It then grew a third pair of wings and used another big bomb attack. I don't know how we kept surviving these. In this form, Ultura was weak to Thunder so I kept Volt Strike in. After taking another Tempest attack, we started dealing good Thunder damage. Then we switched to Mike the Nergigante and after getting a bunch of damage, Ultura goes down. But wait! It doesn't die, but instead becomes more powerful than before. He goes for yet another move that nearly destroys us, which means I have to heal again. We go back and forth dealing damage and I ride Mike and go for the kinship attack dealing a lot of damage to the wings. Then Kyle comes up with a plan, to shoot the arrows with the amulets that Enno was wearing. But we had to break the scales on the wings first. This was not easy. With every turn of Ultora charging this attack, I was thinking we might fail. We were dealing as much damage as we could to those wings. We broke all but one wing and it was at full health. I wasn't sure if we would break the last wing in time before the big attack. I was beginning to think we were gonna lose this. But then Mike got a critical hit, dealing big damage to the wing. On the very next turn, Kyle used a rapid shot to deal a lot of damage to the wing, and then one final attack from Mike, finishing the battle. We went up, Kyle tries to aim his shot, Ratha looks like he's going insane again, but Kyle jumps up, gets his shot in with the amulet, and gets a direct hit, shattering the wings of Altura. We finished it off with Ratha's true power revealed. The light of this power brings an end to the darkness that was Altura. The sky turned bright, and I fell unconscious, but at peace that we saved the world. I, for some reason, stood on the deck and wondered if Ratha would ever come back. But when I call out to him for the first time with my voice, he came out and we rode off. However, I began wondering where Faustrax went since the day I came here. There may be something about this place preventing him from showing up, but I am confident that I will see him again someday. 